Very good evening to all of you and welcome to the uh, this program. This is the lecture series, the NSS Kolkata Golden Jubilee Lecture Series for uh, 38. And uh, the topic is, is very relevant for today. Uh, like uh, a, we need as we need the conservation. And NSS doesn't doesn't mean that the only work for the human uh, human being or mankind. NSS, NSS is for the whole creature. Uh, like uh, as as uh, the, when we celebrated uh, that NSS day, already uh, we uh, we have told that the symbol of NSS or we use the NSS uh, the, uh, logo. It it means itself like it shows itself like a twenty four by seven. NSS is always twenty four by seven for the whole creature of the universe. So so NSS doesn't mean that uh to and doesn't mean to save the mankind only the human being only that means that uh, saving of all the whole creature uh, uh so not me this the, the main theme of the nss is not me but you so it's you it's you means what it's you means every uh, like a uh, human being and all whole the and whole creature of this uh, universe so once uh john f kennedy American president said, the first beauty and proud independence of this great word symbolizes the strength and freedom of America. He was, called, he, he was telling about Eagle. So, but as later days, citizens, we shall fail our trust if we permit the Eagle to disappear. Yes, if uh, because now the thing is that, that uh, uh, now the bird is disappearing. We can see. So this is the high time to think about the species which we are like losing. The species which we are losing with the species we uh, we have to think of all. And uh, once again, the Kedar Dhepi said, "Right or wrong, don't know. But those things do don't give me money, but give satisfaction. If consumes my time it can sorry it consumes my time but gives me happiness those things can't give me future but i can't live without them these things can't give me fame but adds value to my life so conservation is life conservation is life so now uh, i'm just uh, don't waste, without wasting any more time i just like uh, i would like to introduce our, uh, our special speaker today, uh, Mr. Uh, sir, Professor Dr. Rajiv Charyang sir, and uh, uh, Rajiv Rudro sir. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Rudro Charyang sir is a NSS program officer, NSS Big Boy College unit, and the head head of the Department of Geology, Big Boy College, Assam. Master from Guwahati University, and then. Uh, he, he is in he has been engaged in many types of conservation work and all. Presently, he is a program officer of ASS team and, uh, and uh, he is also the awardee of the Yuga Seva Award from uh, Chief Minister of Assam. He is the awardee, uh, he is a state awardee for NSS program officer 2020 and also has a good knowledge on butterflies of Assam, dragonflies, amphibians, and mammals and has uh, organized several nature camps, trainings of locals on ecotourism. Uh, apart from all of this, he is the domain of snake conservation. He is the domain of snake conservation. So without wasting any more time, sir, please, the dice is yours now. Please welcome on the dice. Welcome. On. Welcome, sir. Thank Shall I presentation, uh, go for the presentation now? Yes, 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 sir. Uh, okay, so I'm a uh, uh, very good evening to all the participants and the uh, uh, to the 
Bangladeshi Morning uh, College of Kolkata. And I'm very much uh, thankful uh, for inviting me in this webinar session uh, related to snake conservation, smites and belief, first eight measures and, uh, related to it. And this is already, we all know that uh, on the occasion of uh, NSS Kolkata Golden Jubilee Lecture Series, uh, since we are organized by the NSS team of the Bangladeshi Morning College. And I came to know uh, about it uh, through Agnimel Das, uh, who actually contacted me uh, so a month ago related to organizing some programs. And uh, this was his second uh, initiative uh, with me uh, to organize such and such. And uh, I also met. Uh, uh, the Kolkata West Bengal uh, Regional Director uh, Sarita Patel, ma'am, also during the last uh, Dugapur pre RDC camp, because I was also there with uh, my students uh, uh, representing Assam team uh, with 22 students there. And I met uh, Sarita, uh, ma'am, also there. And I'm also thankful to Professor Sirpa Halder, as well as also Dr. Uh, Tulika Chakravarti, ma'am, uh, a program officer of the college for uh, inviting for this webinar session. And uh, like uh, I just want to like to say something about the snakes. And you see, uh, we all uh, know about the uh, snake uh, from our uh, childhood, that our uh, grandparents, our parents also, and certain other neighborhood also, used to tell everyone that always keep away from snake, because when the snakes uh, sees you, it might come and give you a bite. And so many other uh, might and believe were told to us uh, during our childhood. And that makes a kind of a psychological threat uh, to uh, each and every one of us. Even we become very old at the stage and uh, probably people are still afraid of the snakes. So this has actually been said by Time Memorial about the snake because most of the snake during those days were highly venomous and only few of them were non-venomous. But even though sometimes when the non-venomous snake gives a bite to anyone and people out of fear, out of heart attack, only they die. And this is how the uh, number of uh, patients dying uh, in all across the uh, globe is having that 90% of the cases of snake bite uh, that are occurred only due to non-venomous snake bite. And 10% are actually the real bite case. And 90% of people die due to heart fail and it is the reason why we have maximum number of snake that records in india alone around uh, 45000 people are reported to be uh, dying each year uh, due to snake bite in every corners of india and this is not only for the uh, whenever snake bite but it is only because of the fear psychosis that the people are actually dying and we need to clear that uh, concept. The fear psychosis should be also removed from our mind. And we should educate the people that the presence of the snake also help us ecological balance uh, system. So among the reptiles, we know about the snakes. Uh, then among the reptiles also, there are other group called the lizards. There are other groups called turtles and crocodile. So these are the four different groups of the snakes found in our uh, vicinity. And we all know about those, uh, but, but snakes are something very much unique. Apart from the uh, part of this uh, system, uh, when we uh, know about the uh, all the flora and fauna across the globe, uh, uh, there are certain areas are very much uh, called as biodiversity hotspot zone. And particularly, uh, there are around 36 hotspot zone in the world at present and out of 36 hotspot zone, four hotspot zone fall in India uh, land. And we uh, are staying in a northeastern zone and we are being shared with the Eastern Himalayan range as well as with the Indo-Burma hotspot zone. And then, then again, in the Western Ghats, including Sri Lanka, we have the uh, Western Ghats range. And also there is another part, Andaman Likaba Island, uh, that part we call as Sunda lands. So that is also been associated with the other Laos, Vietnam, that part. So uh, in India, we have four hotspots. Diversity of flora and fauna, including varieties of snakes. So if you see the entire globe conditions, uh, the uh, most of the forest patches has already been destroyed. Uh, today, if every one of you just open the Google Earth 
and you can see the entire globe of India or entire uh, all the countries, and you will find how many green patches are there left in the jungles. So uh, the, basically, we're having the problems with global warming and climate change and other uh, ecological imbalances. So I just would like to go a little bit faster. So approximately uh, 610 species of reptiles are known from India, and about 50% of them are endemic. Endemic means those species which are found only in that region and nowhere else. So that is another term called endemic. Endemic and endangered are there are two terms, but two terms are different. People get confused with endemic and endangered. Endangered are those animals which are actually in the wards of extinctions, where the populations are declining at the rate of 50%. Uh, continuously or the numbers are also declining at a faster rate so there are some values i don't go don't want to go in details about endangered part so endemic are those again uh, found only in one region and nowhere else in the world so it is uh, like in small pockets the uh, few species are found so in the hotspot zone and uh, 50 percent of them are actually endemic species are found even there is a plant or kinds of animals those are found only in that particular region so India has more than 310 species of snakes uh, till date, and uh, many more snakes are yet to be identified uh, or to be discovered because we have lots of uh, areas, uh, untouched areas are there. Even in our own township, we don't know there could be some more new species could be also encountered. And before they are encountered, people used to kill them and we lost the number of species checklist also. We have seven species of snakes and we recorded around 67 species. And the place where I stay in Digboy town, uh, we have around 51 species of uh, snake has been recorded. And these we have found only in the township, not in any jungle areas. So we used to rescue snakes and this uh, rescuing of snake actually, uh, we have been uh, doing it uh, since from 2005 onwards. So when the first time when I actually rescued one snake from some boys uh, who were trying to kill the snake in the roadside, then I, uh, out of fear also, I just wanted to save the snake because I'm also a conservationist also, uh, carrying down some more uh, awareness program on wildlife conservation, but snake is also another part uh, to be also need to be conserved. And uh, like uh, out of fear and uh, like uh, to, uh, to save the species, I put the snake inside a bottle and then I perforated it and then I took it to the forest department where I got introduced to another person. Uh, his name is Anand Watts. So Anand Watts, uh, he is actually a tea garden planter. And uh, with him, actually, I understood uh, how to uh, identify the snakes. And it, uh, and it in the year 2005, uh, the journey on snake conservation begins in me. And then slowly, slowly, I uh, got uh, like uh, trained up by Anand Watts. He was a tea garden planter at Margareta Tea State. And uh, he helped me to identify the snake. Then I joined Digbo College uh, 2008 and then uh, starting my snake conservation program out there in villages, in uh, schools, in colleges nearby. And uh, like uh, creating some awareness and we also distributing the uh, colored posters also. Uh, to identify which snakes are called what and uh, that colorful poster around 30 32 species of, uh, were depicted on that poster and all identification keys were also highlighted there and in that way uh, with the help from uh, the Aranyak, one of the leading NGO in Assam uh, they have helped me for funding and as well as the tea garden also help us to pub publish the the um, uh, poster and we distributed and in that way we uh, could come forward with us conservation of snakes and people here in Digbo do not kill any more snakes so that is actually what we are actually been achieved and uh, we have a very good uh, like places where uh, we uh, have a teaching uh, job and where we got uh, lots of students and uh, coming to colleges for uh, educations every year, so thousand number of students are getting educated, and thousands are passing out. In that way, we have a very good ch channeling out, and whenever our rescue call comes, we immediately go and rescue the snake. Then at times, slowly, I train the forest department staff, I train some local NGOs, and now uh, I'm rescue uh, others are there to help. And at the same time, also 
we are busy on this duty because of our CBAT system and the semester systems and other college duties. So we hardly go now for the rescue because other uh, forest staffs and as well as the NGOs are there to help uh, in Dig Boys. And that is actually we have tried to change the people mindset. Now related to the uh, venomous snakes of uh, the uh, uh, snakes which encounter to somebody's house, uh, we need to know about the cobras. And this cobra, particularly the, the uh, Naza Kotia and Naza Naza, that is actually the monoslate cobra. If you see my cursor, I think the cursor is not visible out here. Uh, cursor is not visible, I think. Okay, it's not been shown here. Uh, anyway. So I would like to say about the snake, uh, which is found on the uh, in the center. Uh, suppose on the left hand side is the king cobra. Hardly the king cobra uh, enters to somebody's house. They are generally uh, preferring in the jungle side. Then in the middle, next one is called monosolid cobra. This monosolid cobra distribution is there in West Bengal as also in in northeastern area. And these particular snakes actually are found also in Nepal also. And this monosolid cobra uh, uh, is uh, uh, frequently found in human habitat, uh, particularly they go inside uh, somebody's house and they go to house uh, somebody's house only to hunt the rats or other uh, like prey uh, inside our house. They do not enter to our house to uh, give a bite, but rather to look for some uh, food in the ecosystem. Then we have the another one on the right hand side. You all know about the popularity of that snake because it is very much uh, commonly seen in the rest of India and it's been found with the snake charmers. And they used to bring this snake uh, frequently and used to like tame them. And uh, these snakes are also commonly found, but generally, generally they are found in the Rajasthan. They are actually found in the dry habitat more than in the wet conditions or in the jungle conditions. So they are much more found in the Rajasthan side or in the other parts of the country. So that is also another snake that are also found uh, frequently in the human habitat. So we need to uh, get precautions from these two snakes on top. Then again, there is a banded crate. Uh, so this banded crate is also found in the northern side or northeastern states. So it is actually a nocturnal one. It is found in the and in the night time so all the venomous snakes are generally active in the uh, night and also there are some non-venomous snakes that are also active in during the daytime also okay so uh, then we uh, uh, know about the another common trait uh, bangaras uh, ceruleus this is given so that we have not found in our locality but this is a very common snake found in india in all parts of India, except in the northeastern states, particularly, and this is very, very common. And in somebody's bed also, and uh, sometimes people uh, do not take any mosquito net, and somehow the snakes uh, sneaks to the bed and try to take the warmth of our own hand also, because the snakes are cold by the animal, as we all know. And in times, then most of the times, these uh, on the when the people feel that something is there, they put their hands there, and they get beaten from the snake. So that is has to be uh, uh, to be taken care of. Uh, and again, another one uh, we have written in Assam is is called Kola Hokaha. This is also a same kind of a crate uh, also found in the northeastern states, especially, and probably distribution is not there in West Bengal side. But anyway. Uh, this is also very near to northeast. So this snake is also very much venomous, and they are also found in the night. They also found to climb onto the bed, or maybe they go very near to the people who sleep on the floor without using the mosquito net. And in that way, most of the cases, the snake also uh, beat uh, the victims, and uh, most of the time, the victim also die because this particular snake, the middle of this all this group snake carries a neurotoxic venom means whatever poison they carry it is having a neurotoxic one then next is actually the another uh, three uh, different uh, vipers are there and these three vipers among the russell uh, pit viper as well as soft scale pit vipers these are the two common snake found in the rest of india and they are also 
habitat as well as somebody's house also and they are nocturnal in, uh, uh, species and these species are actually uh, found to be very much active and they are very deadly also because the number of, of uh, venom they, they just spore is what they give the hemotoxic uh, venom and this hemotoxic venom actually it damages the rbc cell then on the right hand side is highly camouflaged uh, snake is there and that is another pit viper and this is not very much common in the human habitat but they are found in the tea garden especially and also they are found in the jungles where people used to go in the uh, to collect the firewood so they are highly camouflaged and people hardly see it and just touch the uh, branches thinking that there is a branch but actually they touch the snake and out of fear the snake gives a bite and in that way uh, most of the time people used to die uh, if they do not take the treatment on time so as part of this uh, the uh, informations that snakes are actually an ectotherm uh, organism that means it depends uh, it's uh, they are actively uh, found to be active uh, only when the summer condition is there and when winter prevails then they are found to go for hibernations so they are actually depending upon the external temperature there that's why we are called as ectotherms and ectotherm means it is also known as poikilotherms in terms we use it ectotherms so it depends upon the outside temperature so when the sun is there so uh, the earth is warmed up then only the snake will come out from the hole uh, after hibernation it will come out and do the activities and after 6 months it will again uh undergo for hibernation so this was a rule for 6 months they are found to be active and 6 months they are found to be inactive because of the cold temperature and now what happens due to the climate changing and global warming even in the month of uh, december january february uh, also or maybe in the month of november we find the snakes are to be active because it is things that the surrounding uh, 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 art atmosphere is not that very cold so they can withstand that cold that means it is an indicator species you see we know about the art has warm up we know about the global warming and climate changes so this particular snake uh, are also found to be active also in the month of november december january and february so they can withstand that te- cold temperature now the cold temperature is gone because of the climate change and global warming so they are found there okay then they have body is covered by scales so this is also very much uh, common in the, all the snakes and they do not have any limbs they have no maxilla joints so since they do not have any maxilla joint that's why they can open their mouth uh, uh, up to 3 4 times uh, than this uh, size of the or- original mouth because you see their upper jaw and the lower jaw are being joined up by the muscles they are not joined up uh, with the uh, upper jaw and lower jaw are not joined if you just open our mouth we can open our mouth up to a certain limit because we have a upper jaw and lower jaw been joined up together and that's why we cannot open our mouth bigger than the, uh, the expected so snake can expand it because the upper jaw and the lower jaw are not joined together they are joined together with the help of the elastic muscles and this elastic muscle expands as per the food requirement they do not have any eyelids so they cannot uh, close their eyes uh, if they want to go for sleep and uh, they have no ear opening so uh, no snake has a, any kind of ear opening then they have uh, fork type of uh, tongue and with this fork type of tongue so they can uh, utilize the uh, vibrations uh, nearby right side vibration they can utilize and again on the left hand side they can utilize the vibration because they do not have any limbs they want to get uh, rid of the human beings they want to get rid of other animals also so this in that way they require a kind of a sense organ and that sense organ can actually help them to uh, protect them from uh, enemies as well as to get the prey also easily so this is a kind of like a awareness program that we used to do uh, when some students they come to uh, our college uh, and sometimes when they come for a field trip uh, in the any any other reserve forests or sanctuaries so uh, we also been invited and we used to teach them uh, about the different species of snakes so in the field we do not carry the projector it's difficult and we uh, use this kind of uh, posters and in that poster one by one we explain about the snake and in that way we have been uh, educating the people so we all know about the utility of the snakes uh, and uh, uh, in our society in our ecosystem what happened actually the snakes why they 
come to somebody's house because uh, they see generally if a person sees a snake and the snake sees a person what what is the reaction immediately occurred if you just recollect your earlier incident with the snake and countermen uh, in that way you can also identify that, that uh, the um, uh, the people uh, get a little bit back and you can see the snake is also trying to hide somewhere else because the snake will not come and give a uh, chase off to anyone if we don't have these type of snakes that is very very lucky that india doesn't have these type of snakes so what happened the snakes will come now uh, will be seeing and immediately after seeing a human being it will try to hide so it will try to go away from the human being so this is the uh, important characteristic uh, of the snakes and but the snakes uh, uh, out of hungry hunger will try to sneak to somebody's house even though there are some person because why because they are feeling very hungry and they knew know that there are some rats inside your houses and that's why the snakes come to your house so we can get rid of the rat by many other means like i have experimented by using the naphthalene balls the camphor balls which what we call in assam is kofur that ball the naphthalene ball we place it in the door uh, sites where there could be a possibility of uh, some uh, rat entering to somebody's house so when we put the naphthalene balls i have found that the rat stay away from the house because the rat cannot uh, withstand the uh, the uh, uh, camphor smell the naphthalene ball smell okay so that is why the uh, the uh, we have i found and uh, that was i started in 2 years ago and now means my house is also free of any kinds of rats also so in indirectly i am not inviting any snake to my own home also even though i catch a snake but i also had the same fear uh like you all when uh, when a snake also enters to somebody's house or my house also so i will be also afraid because that time i will not be mentally ready to rescue it or to gather my all the catching gears will be in somewhere else in and maybe in the other room but if by the moment i go there the snake might also hide somewhere else so i also uh, may be finding it difficult also uh, same situation might be occur in me also so that is why i have used that naphthalene ball and is found to be very much useful so after 15 days you replace the naphthalene ball then again uh, the smell will be very active and in that way the rats will not sneak to your house so in that way the snake will not come into your house so you see uh, like 2 hours ago i'm just trying to give an explanation 2 hours ago or 5 hours ago a rat has entered to your house and nobody knows it then even though 5 hours has already been passed the snake uh, comes to your vicinity to your campus and suddenly the snake get a smell of a rat and it will follow the smell of the rat uh, on the uh, uh, on the trail of the rat and will enter to the house and will go to that particular site where the rat is hiding and will go and just consume the rat so in this way the snake enters somebody this house now if we keep the rat out of the house then the snake will be always in the house and not come to your home anymore so in that way we are trying to propagate that people use naphthalene balls and in that way people are also using start using the naphthalene balls so we also require some more awareness program on it in our locality because it's a new concept just uh, uh, one uh, one and a half years ago i, I started with this type of uh, programs and that so this is actually so the the snakes are also having a very good uh, ecosystem that uh, if we have studied about the ecological pyramid uh, we know about the food chain food uh, web interactions as well and also we know about the pyramid ecological pyramid see the snake control the rat populations in that way rat population are controlled and if some snakes uh, who are eat, uh, the snakes uh, which are eating on the uh, rat may also increase in number to reduce that number there are some more species of snakes like the monoslid cobra common creed or banded creed will also come and will eat the rat as well as also will eat others non venomous snake species again uh, to control the king cobra 
uh, to to control the other uh, venomous snake like the monocelid cobra or bicelid cobra or common uh, uh, crate or banded crate or the other other species the king cobras are there to control because the king cobras main food or chief food is to eat other snakes that's why their scientific name or the king cobra is being stated as Ophiophagus hannan so we'll come across that part so i just drawing this uh, the ecological pyramid so on the top of the pyramids is the king cobra who control the other poison all actually as as and venomous word is also different so poison we say about the other kinds of chemical poison or like uh, it is having the non-living uh, part but venomous when we say so that is being carried the poison which is been carried by the any organism we call as venomous actually so since that venom is been uh, been carried by the snake uh, who are actually venomous carried in the salivary gland of the uh, venomous snakes so we call as venomous even though i have written here poisonous so mainly we use the term venomous so it will reduce the other snake populations in that way banded crate a black crate the common crate the bicyclic cobra also control the other snake populations again we see the other species of snakes like cat snake rat snake trinket snake also control the rats and mice amphibians uh, populations in that way ecological balance is been set by the nature then again rats also eats our our own food so ultimately we are losing that part so in that way we can draw a kind of a pyramid and the top of the pyramid is a king cobra or there are also some carnivorous uh, species of uh, snake which will also control the other snake population now when we see some kind of a snake uh, in the uh, vicinity suppose in some from hole a small portion of the head is coming out or uh, from a hole so we will thinking that this is snake, but we have identified which one is snake and which one not on the right uh, left hand side uh, figure a is written as a snake okay so we have the eye we have the nasal opening so these are two important marks that we can see uh, from this picture okay on the slide b we have three uh, points one is uh, nasal point on the top on the tip portion then the eye is very prominent and then we on the another arrow we can see a black hole so black hole actually it means it's an external ear opening so snake does not have any ear opening as i said so it is not a snake so it could be a lizard so on the right hand side slide it is a lizard okay so uh, lizard or all other reptiles have the ear opening except the snake do not have any ear opening and the snake cannot hear anything generally they can only get the vibrations and they can get uh, the smell and with a with a tongue they can get the actions to be done so they do not hear anything okay then related with the uh, there's another number figure c is also a reptile and figure d is uh, also a uh, lizard it looks like a snake but it is a lizard even though it does not have any limbs but here actually the instead of having the uh, limbs uh, the, the, the limbs are absent and it has an ear opening the lizard this particular snake like body has an ear opening and this ear opening has uh, led us to the increase that it is a lizard it is not a snake then again on the uh, slide number e uh, when we see there so it is a kind of a amphibians it is called a sicilian it looks like an artworm it looks like another snake but it is not it is an uh, it is a amphibians so this is called a limbless amphibian on the right hand side figure number d is known as uh, limbless uh, lizard okay so when somebody wanted to start with a kind of a snake studying uh, one can go and to a uh, nearest laboratory uh, in the college uh, or in some museum where these such natural uh, these species are being preserved uh, and they've been preserved for a long time ago and these are not the recent one because in recent times the government does not the wildlife protection does not allow anyone to preserve it so in all uh, earlier colleges who have established that that part so with some uh, permission earlier so these species were preserved so one can go for a kind of a uh, observations of the different parts of the snake body 
uh, because the the uh, scales are there and different sc uh, scales have different name uh, been placed in different parts of the eyes or the, to the nasal opening or to their uh, pit organ side so on the so we have different different names like l'oreal infralabial supralabial those are numbers of uh, scales are being named and we can also uh, compare it with uh, live snakes that has been found and we take the pictures and then we can count one by one the, the number of scales on the, the number of other scales found in the other part so we can just uh, match it with our mean uh, taxonomy textbook so there are some literatures how to identify the snakes so we can also go to that part and uh, like if somebody sees a dead snake also uh, uh, can, could be a root kill or could be some uh, other dead specimen found so uh, just inform the forest department and before uh, like uh, going for any kind of disposal by the forest department so we can go for a kind of a scale count uh, it's a dead species so one can start a with that of a dead species also so we can keep on counting the scale in these directions or maybe on the zigzag pattern or maybe in the v set pattern so there are different uh, taxonomy books uh, and you will find how to identify this next we have to count every part of the snake uh, body how many scales are present right from, from the belly and all ventral side scales be counted then also on the top also we need generally we can identify the snake otherwise we will uh, we can we will find it difficult to identify the snake only taking pictures also difficult then instead of counting the snake so one can also go for counting of the uh, scales uh, from the computer after taking the pictures on the belly side so one can also count the uh, one by one so one to ten then 20 then 30 24 so one can count the number of scales easily from uh, this picture so picture should be also taken very nicely to understand the uh, snake uh, scale count without injuring the snake much higher then again uh, how to identify the female and the male uh, species of snakes so here we can see uh, the uh, uh, where the tail portion is there on the right hand side so that tail portion you can see cloacal region written there so in the cloacal region on the right hand side so there the tail starts and the tail starts abruptly means it 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 it, it, it starts uh, the vent portion uh, tapers and then it abruptly becomes uh, tapered and then it goes in that position so uh, that uh, department uh, the this the depressions indicates that it is a female one on the left hand side of your diagram so there you can see another uh, snake whose tail portion is having uh, continuously it has been tapering without any uh, suppressions on the vent position then it is a male and why we can say it is a male because uh, on that part uh, it has two hemipenis so two hemipenis uh, takes that places and that's why it tapers very slowly okay in case of the male but in case of the female if there is no hemipenis and then the depression is there then it goes to the deep portion of the tail and that's why one can identify whether it is a male category of this snake in this there are numbers of different uh, species of uh, particularly in the case of the king cobra uh, on the top of three one uh, three slides are actually having the hemi penis and also in the case of the uh, the um, uh, common trinket snake uh, having uh, this type of uh, hemi penises and then on the coral snake having different color different patterns and also in nasa cotia means the monosilid cobra having uh, this type of hemi penises so anyway uh, so this we, we can see on top of the large occipital seals is there so on top of the scales are different shape so we can identify this say so large occipital seals are absent in other species and on the left hand side it is present so it is a cobra group so that can be also identified whether you can place in the cobra or in the other category of snakes then the, uh, we can go for the uh another different shapes of the snakes are uh, like the largest one of course in the world is the uh uh it's known as a reticulated python so reticulated python is the largest snake and then followed the anaconda and then the indian rock python and then 
uh, the Burmese uh, Python. So these are actually the uh, biggest snakes. And then we have a medium sized uh, snakes, which are called the Indian red snake. In uh, Hindi, it is called Hamna. And in Assam, it's called Muswagum. And it's very, very common, this particular snake, the picture which is set in the middle portion. So it is actually regarded as a farmer's friend because it uh, it is actually a kind of a snake that controls the rat populations. And then down below on the left hand side, the small size snakes, and these are called actually the uh, type flops or blind snake. So it is very small size and we have around 3.9 inches long, uh, smallest uh, uh, snake in the world. So it is found in the Western Atlantic Island. And then the, the African black mamba is the world fastest uh, snake and is the most deadliest one. Uh, luckily, we do not have this species. This snake can run at a speed of uh, 30 km per hour and can kill all the person who is running away from the snake. So uh, the people are running at a speed of 20 km per hour maximum, and this snake can run at a uh, can, uh, uh, crawl at a speed of 30 km per hour. In that way, it can just bite someone and then go and bite to another person. So luckily, this species is not found in Indian soil. So all the snakes who sees human being are always trying to hide or go away from any human being. It will never come and give an attack to you. So that psychological that uh, things we need to clarify and that confidence we need to build today itself. So these were actually, we have uh, made these uh, kind of bilingual posters uh, of Snake of Assam, where we have posted with the uh, local Assamese language and also in the English languages. And there we have given the uh, indications, which are venomous, which are not venomous, which are active in the nighttime, which are active in the daytime. So everything details has been given in this slide. Okay. So now we come across the wipers. Uh, there's the most venomous snakes, the, uh, Another uh, one of the most common snake also, uh, venomous point. So they are widely distributed in the tropical Asia, northeastern India, China, Malaysia, Sumatran, and they are nocturnal in habit, and they give birth to the young ones. The wipers they give birth to the young ones. Most of the snake they lay eggs, and the uh, the eggs uh, also hatches into the young uh, snakes. But in the case of these particular wipers, the wipers they lay the eggs inside their uh, body in a special chamber and there it will be incubated and after 21 days the small baby will come out from the snake body in the vent and people saying that uh, the snake has given birth actually yes they have given birth so we have used a term called ovo vivi peras so it mainly feeds on lizards toads mice birds and birds eggs found often in other herbs and shrubs areas so when we all go to the jungle site especially so one has to be very much careful because they are green in color. They uh, resemble with a stem color, green fresh stem color, and, and they are very small also. And somebody, if they wanted to catch uh, the uh, branches or herbs and shrubs with their own bare hand, and if the snake is there, then the bite occurs. Otherwise, uh, it never has some uh, this thing. So accidentally, the snake out of fear, they give a bite. Suppose we. Uh, walking in some places where there are some big ants. We have a big ant. Even though ants, when they get uh, like climb to our body and somehow you get pressed, so it will give you a bite, simple bite. Similarly, the snake also, when they get injured or they get threat from uh, you accidentally, then they only give a bite. Otherwise, they don't want to waste the time and give a bite to you all. So uh, these uh, snakes uh, have a very long fangs and they can rotate their fangs. So the wipers has a good facility of rotating their fangs and the fang uh, size uh, is very long and we can uh, know the size uh, by seeing their fangs and the size of the fangs is comparatively half the size of the mouth. So it is very long and when it gives a bite, it will go deep inside our muscles. And ultimately, it will try to destroy all the uh, RBC cells uh, nearby. And we have a hemotoxic uh, that uh, uh, the RBC cell will damage. And the venomous content is hemotoxic. And they have a specialty they can rotate their fangs. But in the case of the wipers, uh, like they have the fangs. And that fangs can be rotated. 
and they are joined together with the help of some muscles, moving muscles. And that muscle is now attached to the upper jaw. Okay. So in case of the other snakes, like in the case of the cobra or in case of the um, the crate, the fangs are attached to the uh, floor of the upper jaw on the front side. And that's why they cannot move their uh, fangs. But in case of the wipers, they can move it because they have the muscles uh, has been attached there. And interestingly, these wipers, they are called also called as speed wipers because they have another uh, portions uh, on their uh, mouth. Uh, and the head reason is that they have a nasal opening where they can take the breathing of air. And then they have another opening called the pit organ. And then they have the eyes. So that pit organ is a very unique uh, characteristic of these pit wipers, especially. And from distance, they can identify the warmness of the prey. Means they can identify what is the size of the prey. Suppose they are moving in the dark, so they cannot see properly. And at the same time, they have a covering. Uh, like suppose in front of the snake, there is uh, some leaf, big, big leaves is there. So uh, uh, with that leaf, the snake cannot see also if there are any birds sitting on that tree in the night. So with that sensation of the uh, pit wipe, uh, the pit organ, it can get a thermal sensation, thermal radiations. They can get the thermal radiation, and they can know the size of the victim or the size of the prey, how far it is. So in that way, they give an attack, or they just uh, puncture the, ven uh, the venom into that particular the birds. Okay, So this is how they do it. OK, so then they have an uh, uh, already we have said about nocile eyes and then there are some also pitless wipers. So those pitless wipers are called pitless wipers. OK, so they don't have any this kind of sensitive uh, pit organ. So this pit organ is also pit like organ is also found in the uh, the pythons also. The python also has a heat sensitivity uh, part of okay. it. So they have a vertical people and a large uh, triangular head distinctly set off on the neck. And this is a body, the uh, wipers. And you can see the spare fangs also. The spare fangs uh, are also there in the wipers. If the front uh, uh, teeth broken down due to some kind of injury, immediately the second fang will be in the position. So there, uh, one can also have a, the wipers also has a spare fangs along with the other deaths. So the wipers, which are green in color, especially in the northeastern states, uh, we have found that the to identify the for a layman, uh, uh, the green color snake with red color tinge on the tail portion indicates that it is a wiper. So to identify a wiper, especially the wipers which are green in color, the tail portion also should have a red color or brownish tinge color. So in that way, one can identify, a simple layman can identify whether it is a wiper or any other snake. So in that way, uh, I have find out the, the green color body with red or brown tail uh, and triangular head is the indication that it could be a wiper. Then again, uh, there is another one. Uh, so the red or brown tail uh, portion patch is slightly different. And this is uh, also found in this northeast. And uh, you can see the tail portion, the vent portion is dry gum, and one can identify that this is a female. This is not a male, this is a female, because you can see the vent positions and the tail, uh, there it abruptly tapers, and this uh, tapering abruptly indicates that it could, could be a female individual, not a male one. So in that way, one can also identify by seeing the tail portion, taking the picture, one can enlarge it on the computer or in the camera and can identify whether it is a female or a male one. You can just see the size of the wipers. It is not that very big. It is very. It looks like a very small. Uh, so this it is a completely full grown and uh, the smallest one also have the uh, kind of a, uh, potent venom. So you can see uh, we have been the, like um, uh, accompanied by the forest cups and some uh, naturalists and also i would also like to tell about another person with a camera i think you have already seen in this person and this person he actually belongs from, from west bengal uh, his name is dipesh mondol 
and he is a Bengali professor uh, in Digby College and also uh, goes with me on snake conservation programs as well as snake rescuing part. And he belongs from this West Bengal uh, area called Amtala uh, region. So he's from the Bengali department. And this person is also accompanying us in several locations. And, and this program is actually from the West Bengal side. That's why I would like also tell about DPS Mondol. Okay, then the, uh, the wipers are there with, uh, with also resembles with the, the bark of a tree. So somebody goes in the jungle side where the trees are there and they can also get step on it. So one has to be very careful whether to go when they go to the jungle. So in the straps also on the footpath also, they can find these type of snakes also. And at the same time, I would also like to remind all the viewers that uh, whenever you uh, walk in the summer, uh, in your um, area in night, always carry your torchlight with you. Always carry your torchlight with you. Switch on the torchlight or your mobile torchlight where you can see your footpath. Otherwise, what happens most of the time, we walk uh, blindly uh, in the night uh, and then we step on the snake. And probably, if it is a venomous one, we get a bite. And then uh, we had the trouble we all know. So, one has to be very careful in that part. Again, the, this is an unknown wiper. We got it in Meghalaya and Silong uh, during a kind of a course work. And since we were not uh, equipped with this uh, handling of the snake uh, gearings or whatnot, or were not, was not available with me. So I didn't catch the snake. So I took the photographs. And with these photographs, we could not identify the species because we have never made the scale count. The scale count is very much essential for knowing the snake so one has to go for a taxonomy study then only we can identify but uh, it is a very complex group the wipers are very very complex groups but other species of snakes are easy to identify because they are not very much complex so this is a very complex group of this species and uh, to the, all the audience the, uh, the snake uh, which have evolved in the last or the modernized snakes which are much more evolutionized uh, modernized snake is the wipers because if you see the king cobra is the longest venomous snake in the world but uh, the smallest species the particular the wipers they have evolved very lately and they are much more advanced than any of the other species of snakes so this way they are very much complex group then again interestingly uh this species is called this is one called the mountain pit wiper uh we got it uh, in tinchika district in dunduma and generally, this snake is not recorded in Assam plains. It is recorded in the hilly areas, especially in the Arunachal Pradesh, around 2,000 to 4,000 uh, feet of, uh, above the mean sea level. But this snake was also found in a plain like 150 or 160 uh, mean sea level height. So it was almost uh, uh, found in the uh, uh, Bahaputra plains also. So another interesting uh, part. And this uh, snake was actually found in some uh, area where uh, some boys were trying to play with the snake and it was a very small one and some uh, neighborhood they came and they uh, uh, thought that it could be a python's uh, a baby and luckily the person did not catch it with your hand otherwise if you uh, catch it with the hand uh, bite was the most uh, already given then the patients would be in big trouble and luckily uh, nobody got hurt because they were having the precautions measures then the very much uh, prominent snake is the uh, um, the uh, wipers that are found in the russell wiper found in the vicinity of west bengal and other parts of india uh, especially and they are found to be moving in the night and one cannot find out which is the head portion because they are highly camouflaged with their own structure and they hide the head in such a manner one cannot find the head portion and they cannot also they are sometimes not found to the moving and people uh, do not think that something is there and uh, they're highly camouflaged uh, i want to say so one has to be very careful and then again another one is called a short scale uh, pit viper again uh, they are uh, also found frequently in the indian uh, states and these actually the snake uh uh, regarded the most deadliest one, the saw scale wiper and the Russell wiper, because uh, most of the death occurred uh, by the snake bite case.
is of this uh, two, and another two is what the Yanansa, that is called the about those two species of snake also. Another interestingly, we found this coral uh, snake also, and uh, that also in our college campus, Dick Boy College campus. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a very small one, but one can identify this coral uh, snake by having the white bands on the head, very prominent one. You see, in the East Coast. Uh, there are the college uh, of tech site. Uh, there are 20, 220 meters is having some civil area, and beyond that civil area is uh, having a reserve forest. And we we are staying at a, a reserve forest, and that reserve forest is con uh, it's like Bara, La, Apum, Part, last part of the eastern Himalayan range, starting from the the, the other part, and it's and so eastern Himalayan range. So that is also very much a uh, highly endemic species are found in this region. And again, again, we know about the king cobra. So king cobras are quite uh, common in the uh, certain uh, western hotspot uh, zone. So they are the only uh, 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 snake in the world that builds a nest and will lay the eggs for the young ones to come out. So this is how the snake uh, and this uh, snake has a very uh, prominent uh, bend and uh, they can be identified and they're very big in size and they when they put the hood on will uh, on. you can see the dis distribution of the found in Nepal, uh, the kerala side that has been the world and the how to says you find this particular cobra and these are actually the nest of uh, where uh, the uh, the haze are being brought, uh, the the dead leaves are being brought uh, in the close vicinity. I don't know, but slide is not moving here. Okay, now it's moving. Okay, I'll go back. I don't know. Okay, fine. So the, all the dead leaves are being brought uh, together by moving curling or on the, on the dead leaves, and they will make a hump-like structure. And then underneath the king cobra female will come and just lay the egg and just guard the egg. It will sit on top of the egg, just guard the egg. So if you in vicinity, uh, in some area where bamboo trees are very prominent, are there. So one has to be very careful because uh, if some skid or some boys or some person goes to this hump area, the uh, king cobra might be sitting somewhere nearby and will come out and may give a guard and body comes near to this uh, uh, cobra nest the mother will come out and will try to chase off the intruders so uh, it could be a cow it could be human being also but it will never try to go and kill it. But until unless somebody goes very near to it, then only it will attack. Otherwise, it will not attack. And when the time of the egg is going to be hatched, uh, the, uh, the babies uh, crawl around inside the egg cell. And the vibration has been known to the mother. And mother immediately leaves this area, will never come back. Because the mother knows if the mother stays there and the time when the Babies hatch out, the baby will come and give a bite to the mother, and mother will die. So that is why they, the mother leaves the eggs, but will take care of the eggs on 21 days, just before two hours or four hours before the hatching occurs of any one individual, the mother will leave that particular area. Okay. Then uh, the, there's another one uh, called the uh, same one. Uh, it is actually the 
prominent color. You can see the white markings on the uh, hood and also on the body part. So whenever the snake uh, takes a very uh, forceful in the breath, and then the scales get expanded and you can see the white markings prominently coming out from the skin. And when the snake releases the, uh, the uh, expel the air, then it becomes uh, so smaller in size and the uh, white marking also uh, not visible. So it will be only visible when the snake takes a inbreed of the air. So the king cobra are uh, having uh, four different types of the venomous content. And those are neurotoxic, cardiotoxic, and hematoxic. So there is uh, king cobra uh, uh, having the neurotoxic means it damages the uh, nerve cells. Cardiotoxic means the venom also damages the cardiac muscles. Then hematoxic, that means it also damages your RBC cell. And cytotoxic also can damage the local tissue area where the bite has been done. Okay. Then, as I've said, that they are nocturnal in habit, and sometimes they're also found in the daytime. They can climb trees uh, very easily and also can climb to somebody's roof also. So sometimes we encounter these sticks uh, sneaking to somebody's uh, house. So we have around numbers of King Cobra uh, located in, tw in 25 different locations in Digboy Town itself. And this says that the, we have a very good snake population under. Means is top of the pyramid, we have the king cobra. And this king cobra feeds on other species of snake. And since other species of snakes are available, that's why king cobra are there available. So we need not to uh, kill any snakes in our vicinity. The king cobras are there to control the other snake populations. So this is actually there. And the king cobra hardly enters to somebody's house. And till now, there's no death records of any snakes by the king cobra. But there are, of course, they bite cases with other species of snake. But on the skin cobra, there is. OK. So uh, sometimes uh, we rescue the snake, and sometimes we do not rescue the snake because we have to follow the protocol. So on the other side, you can see some villagers are there. So they have called us because to rescue a snake, they have seen a king cobra. We came there, and then the king cobra, we found that the king cobra was trying to eat a very long. Uh, uh, Bengal monitor lizard. This particular area actually it's a very big area uh, where uh, they are found. Some jungles are there nearby, and uh, there is no human habitat. Human habitat, of course, is there with just 20 30 meters away from the snake. But uh, we know that the king cobra hardly goes to human habitat. And at the same time, the king cobra is already consuming at 3.5 feet long Bengal monitor lizards. And for the years, it's the king cobra is not going to come and disturb anyone nearby. So we did not rescue the snake. And there is some protocol that when the snake is it is be eating some prey, we should not catch any snake. It's after of a hard labor, the snake are able to consume one prey. And the snake will uh, pray and will never come and uh, eat again even though it has been uh, half eaten it will never try to eat so out of fear and out of uh, movement uh, the snake will expel out so the, uh, as part of the protocol we have to follow and we left the snake there itself and giving assurance to the public that if the snakes are being seen to anybody house immediately will come and rescue it so we'll rescue the snake only when it is inside somebody's resident hustle house if it is in the found in the compass also, we hardly risk to make. Is that place where they can live? And we also with a very doctors. So while left us of India, we we'll know so my friend uh, for some soul Ali, he's a good uh, expert, uh, snake handling, uh, not snake handling, but he's very good expert in uh, like uh, rescuing animal. But uh, he, uh, he had uh, asked my help to uh, go for a taxonomy of these uh, scale counting of the snake king cobra, which was rescued and, and was given some kind of uh, microchips. If the king cobra has been rescued again in somebody's location, one can also identify it again with the seeing the microchips there. So till now we have not uh, found uh, recapturing the same. So one can also see uh, sometimes these uh, somebody's house. Uh, 
uh, some snakes and especially it's a king cobra. As I've already said, that it hardly found to human settlement, human area, but still it wants to go to somebody's house. Why? The reason is behind that uh, it has a food chain relationship. In the small, in the door corner on the right hand side, you can see there is a small hole on the door corner. So there, uh, some a rat has entered to that play, particular place. Then again, the rat has already kept a smell uh, in the particular location. Another snake, the Indian rat snakes comes and uh, sneak through that particular hole to eat the rat. And the king cobra also knows that there is another snake inside that house because they have a very strong sense organ. And to eat that Indian rat snake, the snake is trying to go to the somebody's house. So this is why uh, I'm just trying to show you that why the snakes go to somebody's house. So to get rid of it, if you put some naturaline balls, the camphor balls in just on the floor, or you just put it in some kind of small uh, old socks are there, you tie it there properly and just put it in the floor. And with that smell, no rats will enter to that particular area. And ultimately, your house is safe from the snake entering to your campus. Then I have trained the forest staff as I have already sp uh, uh, spoken to you earlier. So uh, like when we catch any snake, so we go always with the forest department staff. And at the same time, we also train the forest staffs. So the person with the uniform, his name is Profullo Gogoi, and he's a very well equipped now with snake handling gears and all. And he's now very active. Like four, four, five years ago, on the instance to snake conservation and also on other animals. So uh, you can see some small girls, they are school going girls, so uh, inside their uh, hostel campus uh, near the water tank, there was another king cobra that we rescued. It. So uh, it was that with that. And then I got this picture in the Facebook. So there was a kind of a wrong handling of the uh, snake of particularly the king cobra. You can see how firmly the person has uh, caught the snake on the neck portion. And if it continues like this, the snake will die because it cannot take any oxygen. No, so we have to. If we are rescuer, also we have to also think uh, for the snake uh, 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 injury. Also, if the snake get injured, then what is the use of rescuing it? Then, so I'm just trying to hide the persons because I didn't want to put him in the figure, but uh, just uh, kind of a, uh, information that if any snake rescuers are there in the vicinity. Try to look that they do not handle the snake wrongly. Uh, this was a king cobra. Uh, it's Ophiophagus. You can see the scientific name, Ophiophagus. Snake. Just the Greek word Ophiophagus. So college officers are also very good in snake handling. And cobra it was almost dead. So we have called a doctor and veterinary doctor from time have the snake so made a stitch on this particular the injury portion and after us then we already say that the king consumes other species of snakes and this is also a kind of a false propaganda by many of the facebook and other uh, newspaper maybe in the news also uh, that the person sees a tree headed uh, king cobra fish and this is probably somewhere in south india i think but the actual picture is this one on the left hand side is the false propaganda with the help of this Photoshop. People have made us so much of fool of this particular uh, section. So they have said that they have found their slavery. I've got in the Sikkim, somebody will say, I've got a Kerala, Kannada, and those, those are the silly things they used to give a false propaganda. So Photoshop can do many things. Then uh, there's another important part of the uh, cobra's group. It's called the uh, uh, monoslate cobra. 
So this monocellular cobra, if you just see the hood, uh, the next portion, so uh, probably the light is also very less here because of the position of my this thing. Anyway, uh, if you see the uh, this portion of the belly portion, if it's a black band here, there's another black band here, then it is a cobra. So you can see the picture in front of you. So this the black band prominently on then also on the below the length, there is also another marking. Okay. Then on the back side, uh, it's called monster cobra having a ring on the back side. So these are cobra that actually enter the body. So identify the cobra group, even the king cobra, the monster cobra, another other particular cobra having that prominent black marking on the ventral portion of the neck. Then uh, we discuss sometimes in the night uh, around 1 30 in the morning uh, from the house uh, around going there for two hours running uh, because the went to somebody's house. We could the snake for two purposes. One purpose is to save the snake, and second purpose is that if the snake is sneaking to somebody's house in the night or also in the daytime, if the snake is still inside the somebody's house, how can the person can sleep peacefully in the night? They have a sleepless night. They will have to go out or uh, go to a secret place. They cannot sleep properly. They have a psychological fear how they can sleep, how the old person can get rid of that particular uh, trauma. And only for that only, even though it is a very late call, we always try to attend this type of cases so that the people can have a very good sleep. So it is also there in our NSS block. So we we want to work for the community as well also. So we get a very good chance to relieve the people to have a very good sleep uh, after the snake rescue. So in the middle of the night, we used to rescue. And you can see one of my friend here on the left hand side who is uh, using. So his name is Gori uh, Buragohai. And he is actually my colleague and he's from man of English department. He is from his professor from English department. And he also accompanied me many times in snake catching and he can alone can handle any venomous snake and his good snake rescuer. Then this is the proper logo of the forest gardens. So that is there. And one can identify this, this is a, on the right hand side, you can see the picture. But this is a cobra. But how to identify cobra when it is in this position? First thing that it is a uh, dark brown in color. Second part that there is no marking on the head because it has been uh, in the normal condition. You can see the neck portion. There's a slight black color on the neck. If you can just see there in the picture uh, where it has been shown, on the neck portion, there's a slight black tinge there. So if you can observe it, that particular uh, position, then you can think that it is a cobra. So how one can identify? You see, you see a snake, immediately do not go away from that vicinity. You just observe the snake from a safe distance. You take out your camera. You take photographs, as many photographs you take it, then you try to enlarge the photographs. And after enlarging the photographs, you will add the hidden keys. Then you can match with your mother books. So this is a cobra. As I have already spoken, uh, well, the slide has not been showing here, it will be coming up. So as I have already spoken that if the hood is on, the next portion, see the next portion, both sides, there is a black tinge color. So black bar colors are prominently found in the neck portion. So there one can identify this. I will show you another picture. The candor, the belly portion is white in color. We know that so it is not a cobra. So the, uh, the neck. The next portion of the black markings prominently. It is the identification keys is that that is a cobra. Then again, a person from coast of Chakravarti, I don't know, but he's from West Bengal and he got uh, he's a very good snake rescuer. And even though the snake rescuer also uh, gets some problem, 
uh, they, they, some accident also happened. That particular person, he handled the snake and put the snake inside the gunny bag. And then it came out and just give a bite on this finger. And the finger has become a cytotoxic effect. It, the local secretions, uh, the tissues has got damaged. And the person has to cut finger uh, with the soap. So uh, one can also have to precautious measures a lot. Some accidents also occur, even to us also. So this spitting like behavior is also found in the most uh, found in our northeastern uh, area, especially in Digboy where it's stay. Then this is the Dismaza quote here from Nepal to West Bengal and in better is a distribution of the bra. In my mobile. Mm. Can you see the uh, sound is not coming properly, sir. Yes. Okay, I will be then. Okay, uh, like uh, the effect and uh, result. You can see the effect and result, but you cannot see the next movement of the slide. Yeah, yeah, okay. the next now slide is, is a map. Okay. Yes, there's a map. So I will go for another map. I will go for another map. Uh, yes, this is the mostly cobra. So you can see the northeast, you can see the Myanmar, you can see the and see Nepal, Bangladesh, Bengal, and uh, uh, northern India side, where the uh, uh, these uh, Naza Kotia, the monosyllable cobra, are found in these locations. And uh, one has to be very careful from this monosyllable cobra entering to somebody's house. If you have free yourself from any kind of uh, uh, frogs or toad or the red entry to your house, then snail not enter to your campus. Then the uh, so I'm waiting for the strike to come out. I don't know, some motion is slow. Can you go a little bit back? Okay, fine. Okay, so this is a cobra that is also prominent in our ability. Uh, where I see the black uh, markings prominently. Again, on the back side, you will find a spectacle. This is called a spectacle cobra. And this spectacle cobra is distributed in the uh, certain regions of India, especially in Nepal and also in West Bengal, then uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. Pakistan. But, uh, here, uh, not seen states. See uh, an a snake and trying to uh, uh, put the snake. I just no, because I don't know what the problem with the snake. I don't know. Slide is not being seen. The slide is not here. I don't know. I think you have sir, some network issues. Yeah, maybe. No. Uh, can you see the slides? Uh, what, are you seeing the NASA NASA distribution? Uh, no, no, it's a, like, yeah, it's a distribution of NASA NASA. You can see the map. No, 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 okay. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the net is dead and we will come out. So I just. In her face, on her head, 
you have seen it in the in most of the time in the TV news also. So what happens? The snake gives a real bite, but saddest thing is that the snake has been uh, treated uh, or been uh, uh, operated, removed the entire venom content. Uh, the gland has been removed and had some stitching. So that stitching actually has actually uh, been done, and the snake does not have any venom now. So when the girl has been beaten many times, nothing happens. This is how the people are earning some money. And if we remove the snake venom, snake venom is a digestive enzyme, digestive organ. And if you the uh, 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 when we uh, about to wear the shoes, one has to be very careful. So sometimes these uh, inside the shoes, the snakes also take some rest. So before you wear your shoes, just kindly check your shoes also. So coming here. So yes, you are here. Then the couple uh, also is there should be uh, bandit. Okay, the bandit can be identified with black bands and the uh, yellow bands prominently found the entire body part. Uh, it's not here. Tower is full. Anyway, uh, so there's another one called the bandit crate. So bandit crate uh, having a black, white, black, white bands on the entire uh, portion, and it's nocturnal. It's very much snake. So. Are active in the night. They have a hexagonal scales on the body. So this is a bandit crit. The feature is there your screen now. So this why they enter this house. So this is where all the reds see black feet. So black feet is also very much prominent. But not very well uh, in India. So this from the state. Then we have the very very one. It's the also spoke to, uh, about it in the uh, program uh, that the snake also uh, climbed to somebody's uh, uh, bed and also tried to take the warmness of her body. So how actually? Many times the people get encountered by this, this common crit bite cases also. So one can identify the bandit crit, uh, black uh, common bandit by having uh, single lines. So this is not I don't know. Let me see. The slides are not in. The slide. Are Okay, I'll just check the internet. Okay, it is okay. So let me share it again. That will be better. If I just stop here, then on network connection is completely connected.
sir has some internet glitches so we have to wait Oh, able now? Yes, sir. You are audible. Am I audible, sir? Uh, the slide is also visible. No, not in slides. I'm not visible. The slide is not visible. No, no, no. I think it's going to be visible now. No. These are the things, these are the limitations. Nowadays, we have to just be a return. Another, uh, just trying to connect it again. Is it visible now? Now it's uh, yes, sir. It is visible. So then I'll go with the uh, just uh, screen says. Let me see if I just increase it. I don't know whether it will work or not. We uh, uh, get often in Central India. So one can identify the common trait is dark brown in color. It is active in the night. It is not a very big snake. And the markings, you see the marking on the white bands on the trunk portion, the uh, white bands are a little bit there. In West Bengal and other India, and most of the time, people get bitten by this common. So on top, uh, there is a the the patterns are on the like uh, on slanting position. You can see on top portion on the trunk, the white lines are very uh, near to it, and on the belly side, the white lines are a little bit far off. So in that way, one can identify the uh, common tree. Then we have another species of snake. This is more common in our region called the uh, 
So it is like this only one can identify the cobra or not then sometimes what happened the snakes the six to somebody's house to look for this uh, the uh, bufo bufo we all know that it's not bufo bufo it is called dr fina melanus discuss now because professor from north odisha university you must be knowing professor susil kumar he actually named this scientific name so it is now known as dr fina melanus Years. And these are cat snakes. So these cat snakes are also found uh, across India, uh, but the snout tissue species are different from the rest of India also. So we can see the snake, the large spotted cat snake. So different different. So why we call it cat snake? Because the eyes are just look like the eyes of a cat. That's why it's called cat snake. And these are all mildly venomous snakes, and they are found in the roof ceiling. In there is a house, very old house with a old uh, uh, asan type house or some roof is there. So on that uh, roof ceiling, the snakes uh, stays there. Also, it stays under some trees also. Then you can see another thai, uh, cat snake. Uh, it's called a Thai cat snake. So they are in the striking positions, the orange color, and the orange color actually is a juvenile. When it becomes adult, the color changes to brown in color. So very common in our area, and you can see the S shape. The S shape is called the striking stage. So it will try to expand its uh, uh, neck or the entire body uh, longitudinally and can attack somebody. But if it, this particular snake attack also, nothing to worry because it does not carry any uh, poisonous uh, thing that can kill a human being. But it can kill a small mammals. It has a uh, rear fin. So this is another uh, endemic species we call as Assamese cat snake. This is a very common one it's called green wine snake. So it is found across India, and uh, complete the body is green in color. Even the tail portion is green in color, and the mouth portion is very much tapering and longer. Okay, so one can identify the green wine snakes, and it also gives a bite to somebody uh, when they try to uh, get handle like this. So you can see the punctured marks. If the punctured marks are bigger, the, uh, uh, the rear side, then we can recognize that this is a rear fang snake bite. So when it's a rear snake bite case, we need, we not worry much uh, because it also carries a hemotoxic content. If the venom content has been poured uh, entirely on this particular victim, then the patient may have a problem with hemotoxic content. Uh, Damages of the RBC cell. Otherwise, in the small uh, bite, uh, we hardly give any injections are given for this uh, snake bite case. Only we need to take the tetanus injections. So we have another one is called the checkered square killback snake. Very very common in our all uh, across India. And this uh, snake are found in the water. They are mostly found in the pond. We take it from the fishes as well as all other food. So this is a non-venomous snake. Totally non-venomous snakes, and but they are very aggressive. They try to give bite, and if there is somebody kills it, also they be also jailed for twelve years imprisonment. So you can see the 
how the snake uh, has been uh, like uh, uh, protected in our area whenever we capture any snake we uh, they, there are lots of crowds gathering we call them near to us we identify we show them the identifying keys of that particular snake that's the person who can have the courage to handle the snake from the back side from the tail portion and There is another called common tinted snake which is found in this West Bengal also. They are not uh, venomous, but they are aggressive. They are found in a paddy field to control the rat population. They are also found in some store, uh, rice store granaries also. And then the, there is another one uh, called the banded tinted snake. So it was rediscovered after 100 years. And fortunately, we got this one in our college campus. So these are baby color of the snake. And when it becomes the color is different. So navy heads uh, on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we have a orange color things. So it looks like a bended crate, but it's not a bended crate. Bended crates are different in color or the, uh, the uh, pattern. Initially, we thought that this is a bended crate baby, but later on, we came to know that it's not, it is not a bended crate baby. It is a bended trinket snake, another uh, non venomous snake. So one can identify this uh, snake by this uh, mechanism. You can see on the down the also not also the belly, but this in this case the upper side picture the black markings are not prominent. It's, it's it is only uh, covered in the half portion, not completely. The pens are not completed. So this is how one can identify with a banded trinket snake and banded tree. Another interesting uh, snake that is found in our locality is called the Assam snail eater. This particular snake feeds on snails. It feeds on snails. So it helps in the controlling the snail populations in our locality. So the snakes also reduces the snail populations in our locality. It only, not only will control the rat population, not only control the frog population, but also will reduce other species just like this one also. Then we have this one, a very, very common uh, snake called wolf snake. And this snake always get confused with common prey. To identify the uh, and to differentiate it with, among the two is that the we, this is coming having a, a X shape uh, marking on the back portion. You can see the X marking on the back portion. So this X marking is common. And this is the difference between the common plate and the common loop this is another one uh, this is called lycodon javi a uh, very rare one so uh, we do not find it very frequently this is called the amna or indian red snake so it says in hindi is amna so we have also some local name also in bengali i don't know i just forgot the name so it is uh, non venomous snake so one can see it is very easy to handle the Indian red snake. So all the DOFOs and the ACF or staffs have been trained, students have been trained, then different professors from different colleges also been trained how to handle snakes. So this is how we are trying to train up everyone how to handle snakes. And that's why we are successful in deploy related with the snake uh, thing. So how one can identify that Hamna or the Indian red snake? You can see that complete body is completely black in color. And then on the you can see completely white scales and on the bordering of the white scales, there's some black dots, black lines. So this is an indication mark. So one can identify the Indian red snake by seeing the pointing that, 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 that portion. Indian red snake has a typical small black lines on the lips. 
So if you see this type of snake, nothing to worry. It is just a, a friend of yours who are trying to control the rat population. And this is another interesting story I would like to tell about the Indian rat snake. These are all newly hatched Indian rat snake are from somebody's house. And what happens in the after summer vacations when they all came back to their own home, opened the door and inside the bedroom, lots of snakes was moving here and there, the babies. And these babies are actually the Indian rat snake babies. So we were called by the uh, owner and then we came there and we uh, saw that is in snake and, and told them that is an Indian rat snake baby. The owner said, just shoot that snake. This is in my next uh, doorstep. When the snake will uh, go up, it will eat all my eggs. So, 11 of them, it is collected and we release the, the person's uh, own order. So, this is how people are accepting snakes in our locality. Even sometimes we have a problem with this type of snakes that they also consume some eggs and snakes also. So, then the conflict begins, but it is also their part of the food. Then there's a called Indian Chinese red snake. Uh, so very rare. One can identify the Indo Chinese red snake by seeing the black marking on the, uh, the or uh, by seeing the uh, bigger eye uh, on the uh, head portion. So the, this is only snake which have a very big eyes or bulging eyes. So one can identify this uh, snake by seeing the very bigger eyes. So non venomous snake. You can see this uh, Indo Chinese red snake. So it is found in the northeastern states, especially. Then another one, yellow spotted kukri snakes. So another uh, like a similar species also found in rest of India is a yellow spotted kukri snake. It is a non-venomous snakes and they are found in the wall cracks of somebody's house also or in the wall also. You can see how friendly they could be. Uh, just kind of a ring. They, they, are, they do not attack human being, not at all. These are called another common mock wiper. So one can identify the common mock wiper by seeing this type of uh, picture, some kind of identification keys that has been mentioned with a v, uh, a y shape marking on the head, very prominent. So one can identify the common mock wiper. Then again, one can identify it uh, as a painted bronze spec tree snake. It's very common in our locality and it moves very fast. So it is a non venomous snake also. Then there's another one called Kukri snake, non-venomous snake. So the uh, this is the snake that actually I first uh, uh, got encountered with the snake catching, uh, learning about the snake. So this was a snake that was a Kukri that snake was uh, rescued. Then again, we know about the type of called the blind snakes. So they cannot see it properly. And they uh, they having the head portion, uh, blunt head and also a blunt tail also. But the tail portion, they have a small point, and from that point, they can break the termites mole. And in that way, uh, they eat up the termites. And these snakes are uh, totally blind. That's why they are called blind snakes. Even though they have the eyes, but the eyes actually are functionless because it's been covered by scales, and it is inside the scale, and they cannot see properly. And they are nocturnal inhabited. They are found active in the night time. They are totally harmless. You can see how they are helping us by reducing the termite populations in our vicinity. So same type clubs, blind snakes. So there are around 17 numbers of species across India. Different variants. Then we have the Burmese python. Uh, this has been distributed. We have three species of python in India. So one is called the uh, Indian rock python. Second one is called the uh, Burmese python, found in the northeastern states, and another reticulated python. So reticular python is also found in northeastern states. So uh, you can see the reticular python photographs. So this has not been taken in Assam, uh, probably somewhere in Mizoram. So it was reported there. And uh, the the uh, the uh, Burmese rock python picture is out there. Then these particular pythons actually evolved long time ago. And it has two vestigial uh, legs also on the uh, vent position. So you can see in the uh, hind leg position, there are two vestigial legs, but these are not having bones, but having very hard structure on the vent portion. So it could be regarded as a vestigial legs. These are the snake catching uh, gears that one can use it. So we, we use the snake hooks only and the snake catching bags. 
we hardly use the snake tongue if somebody uses a snake tongue it may also injure the snake because uh, the the person may not be able to know how uh, what is the total pressure should be given on the snake tongue so by doing so the first learner will uh, will uh, automatically will kill the snake by breaking the spinal cord then will be no use of rescuing that particular snake so one can use it by the snake catching bags so there are different methods of snake handling but so one can also make a pipe bag and also put the snake inside this particular bag so snake will automatically go inside that uh, hole of the bag and will be trapped there so by using this part uh, see uh, the uh, we rescued in our digboy college girl hostel campus and this was a cat snake it was just on the back side uh, the railings uh, and then a grill and then was rescued and uh, just freely we just rescued the snake like this with this particular the hook we hardly use the snake tongue so this is how one can use the snake hook then again we uh, take the measurement of the uh, snakes uh, what is the length and then uh, interestingly we found the same individual uh, coming back to the same location after we release it uh, it was one kilometer away from the rescue site we released it previous year the next year we found the snake coming to the same locality again again the snake can come to back to its own original uh, locations even though you uh, rescue the snake and uh, rehabilitate in some 100 kilometers away the snake will also will able to travel back to that uh, area but it will take three months or four months to come back to that locations so this kind of treatment to given this python somebody have tried to puncture it a long time ago so we uh, the, with the help of the doctors we give the treatment so snake handling for easy for air passes so you can see how i'm catching the snake so i'm trying to allowing the ventral portion of the neck uh, free so that the snake can uh, uh, easily uh, use the air passes without any suffocations then the uh, putting the snake on the kind of a test tube uh, the head portion I put inside the test tube and the other side of the test tube is having some small holes so that the uh, air can be easily breathed and I have also uh, like uh, that the snake from my hand as well as the snake so the doctors are doing the treatment so this is how we are doing the snake rescuing part even we have a very supportive principal sir so on the center you can see a person is sitting there so he is our principal sir he is very dynamic dr deep Sokia, sir and with his support we are able to like uh, carry out the snake uh, the rescuing part and the nss team is also been greatly supported by our principal sir also and we can see a uh, professor on st uh, standing on that uh, right corner uh, uh, from philosophy then english from assamis department and some students and gain uh, the office staffs and the first department. Then we have another energetic uh, retired uh, vice principal, Katarana Tim Sina, is very good in barding as well, also in snake uh, handling. Also, this is how we used to do the awareness programs in different uh, parts of the uh, our area. And again, it's having some problem. The slide is not moving anyway. Uh, slide is not moving so i do i do but may have been some problem just need to wait another probably connect it let me share it again okay yes now so this is a kind of a comparative analysis of the venomous and non-venomous snake so on the left hand side you see the prominent markings of white uh, black black lines presence of black lines is an indian red snake then you can find no lines on this uh, black, black color uh, uh, called assam crate or greater black crate then on the uh, monoslate cobra also will not find the black markings on the leaves the leaves are completely white in color but you can see in the cobra that there is also a black lines on the neck portion on the neck portion there are two black lines so this is a cobra then again, you can see the comparisons of the Indian rat snake and the greater black crate. So, uh, like both of them are found in the northeastern area, but the black greater black crate is not found in the rest of uh, India. It is found mainly in the northeastern states. Then we can see the comparative analysis of the banded trinket snake. 
and the bended crate. So totally two, two different species are different. So one is venomous and other one is not venomous. This is an interesting one that I wanted to share to you all about the common wolf snake and a common crate. So please see this picture nicely uh, because these two snakes are found in rest of India. And uh, this particular uh, snake has a hex, uh, X shape marking on the back side of this called the common wolf snake. And on the right hand side, they have a black lines, but these black lines is not in that particular X marking. It is just uh, having a um, on top uh, on the trunk, there's a narrow white lines of two lines, then again, the same line going down to the belly side, it is expanded in that pattern. So you can see the markings at number four. Number three is different, it's a head portion. Head portion is slightly blunt, and the head portion, number two, of the non-venomous snake, common wolf snake, is slightly tapering, it's completely pointed. But in the case of the venomous snake, the head portion is slightly blunt in shape. So one can also find, and again, the tails are not very long in the case of the venomous snake. Okay, so I think the, you can, the viewers can also take a screenshot of this particular uh, slide so that they can also use it as kind of a references. Uh, probably I'll just give for some time so that one can also go for a screenshot and just uh, go for a screenshot of this picture. And this same picture is also available in, in my Facebook account also. So one can also go to the snake uh, album and can find this uh, uh, picture out there as a kind of comparative analysis it is for the audience to see. Okay, then uh, we have the uh, green cat snake and the uh, wiper. As I have already showed about my previous slide that the red color tinge on the tail portion is uh, um, having, it is a wiper. And the other snake which have, have no red color marking, it is not a wiper, so it could be a green cat snake or a green wine snake. Okay, then the one can also get confused with the thamna or the Indian red snake with the king cobra. How one can get differentiated with uh, the two is that you see the white markings on the left hand side slide. The white marking is prominent on the Indian red snake, but it is not in the straight line. It is having a light crooked line. Okay, but on the right hand side, you know, the king cobra, you can see the prominent white linings uh, very visible. So it is a white bands regular, and here the white bands is irregular. So if you see a belly portion of a snake, or you can see the trunk portion of a snake, so we can identify whether it's a king cobra or an Indian red snake. So just see the markings. So you can also take a screenshot of this part so that it can also be helpful for you in a later uh, part. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide then. So I just and we do know about the species. Try to keep a safe distance from uh, any kind of snakes. So it could be a kind of spitting cobra. Um, it's not found in our uh, central India, but the uh, spitting cobra is already common in our region in northeast, especially in Big Boy area. So always try to carry a pocket uh, torch light during the dark hours so that you are free from any kind of stepping on the snake so that your your body is protected from the snake bite. And uh, if somebody sees a snake, do not, not kill it. Rather call some friend who can assist you in snake rescuing part. So when we see the fang portions, so we'll go for the fang markings. So after the snake bite, uh, one how one can identify you see on the top of the slide, uh, there's a two uh, uh, fangs, prominent fangs coming out from the snake. So that is a very big, uh, ultimately, if the puncture has been done by these fangs, it will be big pu uh, puncture marks. But the rest of the teeth will be also there, but it is non-venomous uh, teeth. So if you see the puncture marks on the down below on the figure number A here, uh, there you will find the black marking, uh, two, two bigger markings. So two bigger marking indicates there is a fair venomous snake bite case but on the figure number b just down below there is no such black uh, uh, there is no such bigger markings puncture markings then it is identified there is a non venomous snake bite cases then we see 
big size of fangs two numbers and the small one if there is no big size fangs on all the size of the fangs puncture marks are same size then it is a nominal but if the other marking the rest is the minimum spike cases okay now this conditions of this uh, become like this nothing to do also uh, it will sell your hand it will also will get kind of damage that uh, hand portion also but if we do the proper treatment we can save ourselves so we have lots of other uh, symptoms and the symptoms this able in the internet i won't go much uh, about it so one can just read it out uh, later on uh, by seeing the general symptoms of snake bites just type that one and you can see it in the uh, in the uh, yeah. Now, uh, biting first, uh, how biting is So, you see, the biting uh, area, uh, if somebody is being bitten, okay, number three. Try to wash the wound with some kind of soap and just try to squeeze out the blood with your hand like this. Okay, just uh, squeeze out uh, like this. Uh, that, uh, but do not put any puncture uh, like uh, sharp weapons on here. Do not put any needle. Do not put any blade out here. So as far you can just do it for two three times. Then again, you have to tie uh, that particular uh, wound in such a manner that the blood circulation will slow down. We cannot stop the blood circulation at all, but it will just slow slow down. So on the leg, we we should also try to understand that there are two bones, and on the fo forearm here also we have two bones, radio ulna, and there is a uh, the, the uh, tibia fibula. So if you tie on top it also, still the blood can uh, passes through uh, in the middle of these two uh, bones. There will be of no use. So better tie it in the such a manner so that the blood circulation is reduced and put a stick on that person so that the person do not bend his leg or his hand. In that way, it will reduce the blood circulations and will help. And then reach to the doctor as soon as possible. You see, the people are also having the, some kind of this type of business uh, of false way of uh, uh, treating the snake biting cases. This is a non-venomous snake bite cases. And the local uh, doctors, they come, they, they put some mantras and they try to put it in that uh, way. We have put the X marking. So this is not a way of uh, uh, doing any first state measures. One should not tie in such a manner. And they put some kind of Johar Mura on that particular locations and they say that if it falls down then the venom has already been taken down you see this is a totally non-venomous snake bite non-venomous snake bite ultimately the patient will be okay but if the it is a venomous snake bite only the doctor can save nobody can save it only the doctors can save so we have to educate the people in our locality so for the educations we have lots of books also available in bilingual language uh, like the Aranyak people, they have done uh, a very good work in English and Assamese version of the snakes found in our region. And also one can also follow the photographic guidebook from uh, internet. One can go on the Amazon or Flipkart. They can get this book, Snakes of India, written by Romulus Whitaker and also Captain. There's another book written by Indranil Das. And there are so many other books also on the snake uh, uh, informations. So one can also make this kind of posters and can distribute to each and every corners of the um, uh, your area so that one can also get educated about which snakes are poisonous and which are not and what are the first step measures of what one can, can do so this was our second version so uh, then the, we used to, to put these posters in this such a way so that everybody can see the poster there 
So my colleague uh, Gauri Burhagoy is teaching, educating the student how to handle snakes, and this is a non-venomous one, how one can handle the snake. And we will discuss amount about the myths and belief that do snake drink milk. The answer is snake uh, drink milks only to reduce the thirst, not for the permanent purposes. You see the snake charmers, uh, they keep the snake in the bag, in the small box for a period of seven days without giving any inch of water. And out of thirst, the snake will drink the milk. Only out of thirst, the snake will drink the milk. And after some time uh, of two, three hours or so, the snake will excrete out all the uh, milk because it cannot digest the milk and the snake will undergo a kind of a dehydration and diarrhea also. So this is a wrong uh, message that the snake drink milk. So snake drink milk only when they are kept away from water for a period of seven days or so. And out of thirst only they drink the milk because they think there is a liquid. So let's uh, uh, reduce the thirst. Snake remains and reserve, uh, remember is for 12 years. It is a very wrong concept. No snake in India or in the world will take revenge on you. Suppose somebody have injured a snake and after a few hours, you will find another snake comes and bites you. That is also true. But how and why? Actually, the snake, when they are entering to somebody's house, when they see some uh, human beings, it will try to hide. But still, if the human being tries to kill the snake, it will try to urinate. It will try to excrete out its, all its uh, waste products as well it will also will release the pheromones. Now, when the pheromones are being released, reproductive organs, the pheromones are released. So it goes in the atmosphere, in the air surrounding up to two kilometers away. Where their pheromones are available. When the uh, persons have killed already the snake by the time, have put the snake in some other uh, art material, they have disposed the snake already, but still the uh, person concerned is there in that particular house and doing some other work. Immediately he sees another snake in front of him. Then he gets afraid. Okay, the snake is now have been uh, raised up and trying to take a revenge. No. Thing is that the person is carrying the pheromones on his legs. The person is carrying the pheromones on his pant. The person is carrying the pheromones also in his chappals or in, in his shoes or on any other his belongings. Because the pheromones are so much strong that get, can also attest to your hand also. And still, if you just smell it properly, you can still get the pheromone smell. I can, we can feel the pheromone smell in our own hand when we handle the snake. So we have to wash our hand very nicely, but still we find the smell is still there. So we have to reduce it. Okay. So this is how actually uh, the, the that specimen is already been uh, the, uh, the somebody have killed that uh, snake has already been uh, disposed. The next snake comes because it wants to look for the mating partner, and the mating partner the, the pheromone smell is still there in the person who have killed the snake or have, who have handled the snake. And this is why people think that it is a revenge. So it is not a revenge. Actually, it's trying to find out the opposite in that person where they can find. So it will try to kill the person first. Then it will go to his uh, shard inside or his uh, pen inside. We'll be looking for the mate partners. So in this way, the uh, snake takes a revenge. But it's not a kind of revenge. It's just looking for the mating partner. Snake do not dance due to the tunes of the snake charmer. As I have already said, the snake do not have any kind of ear opening. So it will dance on that float only when the snake uh, uh, actually tries to give a bite on the flute. So in that way, the snake will move uh, in front of that particular flute. So in that flute, it will uh, play it in that way. And the snake uh, trying to look for some biting on the hand or somewhere else. So it was it is their defensive measures, actually. They're using their movements in the kind of defensive measures and that's why people think they're actually dancing it's not dancing at all then on the case of this particular the snake do not carry any kind of diamond on their forehead actually what happens the snake uh, undergo a kind of what molting uh, removing of the old skin 
so when the old skin has been removed sometimes what happen sometimes the old skin uh, get attached on some corner of the neck automatically what happens that uh, it has a reflection so, so in the night when a uh, snake uh, uh, somebody sees a snake and some light is there ultimately the snake head will have kind of a reflection it will be like a actually is not the diamond is actually the snake own skin molted skin for the people say from the tail portion the snakes uh, have a spine and with the spine they try to uh, injure somebody or something they have a venom there is no such kind of spines in any snake tail portion there are certain uh, snakes that they can catch snakes and gain uh, some antras somebody some snake from the old house can say that uh have you seen the any snake in your vicinity you may be saying yes you have seen of course also commonly found then he will say that do you want to take the snake from your location you will be very happy to take snake okay fine then then the person will ask you to give me some rice grains so you will go immediately inside the home and you will try to collect the rice grains or maybe some maida atta cereals also Uh, and then you give uh, the uh, uh, the snake charmer that particular bundle of uh, the one kg or half kg of rice. In the meantime, what the person do inside the bag, it will try to put the hand down and then will take out a bottle. And that bottle, I uh, will, uh, will they will try to wash in their own hand and that uh, uh, close the bottle and then they put the uh, the rice and they will paste it like this and they will throw there. In, in uh, nearby to your surroundings, and after play uh, saying some mantras, you will find that snakes of that particular species are coming to your locality, and immediately the person will try to catch the snakes. Actually, it does in the such sense, man. The snake charmers they actually kill a snake previously. They extract the the uh, pheromones from the snake. and they mix it uh, with their rice and this in the way the pheromones are being uh, spread in that locality and with the pheromone smell the other snakes come to that location and this way the snake business is been done by this type of snake charmers so there is no such kind of a snake treatment by the local doctors only the doctors can save it but not the local doctors so this is my uh, part so uh we discussed uh, this part and now it is a session for interactions so i just find up my presentation out here and i would uh, be happy to interact with the uh audience is uh is the thank you for your so much like insightful talk in the topic and then uh, i'm hopefully those who have joined with us like eager eagerly like they are asking so much of question and hopefully they they have enjoyed all the session very much thank you so much sir for your that uh, illuminating session thank you sir now sir we have the question uh we have some question hidayatullah Hidayatullah is asking, is it for cases before hatching egg or snake sniff their baby? Ah, uh, it is only in the case of the king cobra. Well, I don't know, but the camera is showing some. And she did with that anyway. Cobra ah uh, uh, is only snake in the world who builds a nest and will protect the egg. Until it is going to be hatched, and if you just uh, uh, take for another example of the other cobras, the other cobras also take care of the eggs. They will lay the eggs there, and will guard the egg without building any nest. And as soon as the egg is going to be hatched, the babies uh, will, uh, will be moving inside the uh, egg. So the the vibration is being absorbed by the mother, and mother will leave the egg site. Apart from that, other snakes who lay the eggs are least bothered. They will just lay the egg in an appropriate uh, uh, habitat, and they will not take care of the young ones. Only the cobra will 
tried to guard the eggs for a period of 21 days and that's all but other snake they do not care anything they just lay the eggs will lay the eggs of course and then they leave it and they do that uh, we have a good next portion. Uh, Mr. Joyan Sudas is asking, is there any way to save one's life if anyone is bitten by cobra? Yes, of course. You see, uh, if anyone uh, has been bitten by any species of snakes, so first of all, he has to assure the patient that he is not going to die, give him a little bit of comfort, then ask the patients to not to move his and or leg so the blood circulation reduce. Go to a nearby uh, water tap, wash your hand properly with some soap, and try to squeeze out the blood uh, from the uh, wound portion so that cert certain amount of the venom also goes out. But do not put any sharp uh, objects near to the right. Otherwise, you will be damaged your uh, veins or any other part. And this, and you do it, you are talking. And you must uh, also, as you, tomorrow you go to a doctor nearby a hospital, you try to get a message from the doctor if some snake like this occurs in my vicinity. Are there any uh, snake uh, biting treatment available in your hospital or not? You try to identify the hospital where this snake biting is available. And in that way, you can also ever you Helping the, uh, the, 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 the they can they can also get relief from the snake bite cases. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Then again, we have a question from Hadatullah, sir. What is the benefits of banded thread? Thing? What are the benefit of banded thread? Yes. So, benefit of banded thread is that the all snakes have a benefit to the nature, including banded thread, because banded thread also help in reducing the other snake populations it also found to consume other snakes also which are smaller in size number two it will also try to eat all the rats in your locality so in the night time they are found often just near to your door or near to your veranda and will be waiting there motionless and very slow in movement but they can also move very fast also uh, during some kind of uh, other, uh, when they see a rat, when they see other snake, they will also hunt at a very high speed. But normally they are very motionless and they wait it there as a, uh, as a non object. And when this uh, rat enters to that location, immediately it will go and hunt that uh, rat. So this is how the bandit kids are much more benefited. Red populations as well as other snake population in our vicinity, but they are highly venomous. Thank you, sir. Now, the next portion is from Ananya Bhattacharya. She is asking sometimes we observe that uh, deadly snakes cause severe harm in our poultry farming. Is there any preventive measure to prevent? Uh, I can understand because most. Especially, they sneak to the poultry farm and they try to eat the small, the small chicks also. And at the same time, they also try to eat the eggs. Uh, at present, you see, uh, you can put some small nets. Uh, uh, generally, what we have to do, uh, we need to put some proper net uh, nets on the entire poultry farm so that no snake can enter to that particular poultry farm. Generally, what happens, people use the uh, bigger nets, okay, the goat fencing or something like that, so that the uh, it is also cost effective. But if you put the small uh, iron nets, okay, and that uh, will uh, help you to get rid of the uh, snake uh, entering to your poultry farm. Otherwise, uh, there is no other options. And you, can also, uh, you cannot put the napoleon balls also there because it might also harm to the local chickens because the chicks may also find it difficult with the spelling spell on appealing balls they, because they most of the time they stay in the ground and it might also harm them. So better to use a small net so that, that the, the snake cannot enter to that. Uh, so next question is from uh, Mr. 
Next question is from Janpala. Uh, uh, sir, can we team snakes such as cobra as pet animals? See, as, uh, you shown, as you have uh, shown uh, a cobra in your slide, Mr. Sir. No, I cannot get the second question. What was the second question? Uh, is there a question, sir? Can we team snakes uh, such as cobra as pet animals? Mm -hmm. The second question uh, all, all, all that. The, uh, he, has given the, he has given an example an example like uh, you as you have shown a cobra in your slide with the you see uh, uh we under indian wildlife protection act nobody is allowed to keep any snake species in their own house so it is against the wildlife protection act so all the snakes are protected under civil four as well as also civil two species so all the snakes, uh, most of them are protected under Schedule 4 of Indian Wildlife Person Act and Schedule 2 uh, are there, like the Indian Red Snake, the, 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 the Indian Water Snake, then the Cobras are all protected under Schedule 2 species. So no snakes are allowed to keep as a pet. But in case of the Indian Red Snake or the Copper-Headed Tentic Snake, uh, people are uh, accepting it as a kind of pest, uh, as a pet in their own courtyard where it is totally open area so they are telling that it is better to keep a snake than a cat in a house you see uh, the cat will also steal some uh, fish also from your kitchen but the snake will not eat the cooked uh, item it will try to sneak to the rat so in that way if, if somebody sees a uh, red snake inside the somebody's house so indirectly it is a kind of a pet but again it will also go out so nobody can keep a, uh, capture a snake in the, inside a bottle or inside any case. So it will come under in the wildlife protection act. So you just keep it there. You uh, allow the snake to roam in your campus without any fear. Uh, then only uh, it is it will be act as a kind of pet. So in that way, you can just keep. But you cannot keep any cobras also. And uh, snake charmers uh, are also illegal in Indian context. No snake charmers are allowed. Any snake. If somebody sees a uh, snake charmers in your locality, uh, in our locality also, the students are very prone and they just immediately inform the local police as well as local forest department and other Indian police officers. They are being uh, arrested in that purposes also. So no snake charmers are allowed to keep any snake or no <laughs> And uh, actually, the lots of questions are there now. Which, uh, uh, can't take more. I think Dr. Saito is some first snake bites the man. What made you should, uh, should you take as first? Aid? Sir has shown uh, this thing. Yes, I already have something. Uh, so then. Uh, the thing is. Uh, People are very much like uh, they are actually keeping themselves very infection, they get very chronic infection and all. Even though they get the name of the field, so can they identify any natural disaster? At the moment, it's not, uh, we don't know anything about it. But uh, as part of uh, some kind of natural disaster is going to happen, and uh, then we might uh, see some ants coming out from the ground because some vibration they can feel on the Again, a question is there. Uh, sir, can a snake drink? I think uh, Radhashree Mary is asking. Can a snake drink? Uh, drink water. The snake can drink water. They also been found to drink on some uh, eggs that has been broken down. So they also drink the, the yolk uh, of a chicken uh, egg, also been found. And the big lot of water animals. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.
You see, for India, was very crucial, and the fact that asking us to get the town visa near hospital, whereas me, I think this is easy. So instead of wasting the time to a hospital where the snake biting case is not been done properly, try to look for another hospital which has the uh, ability to handle this type of cases. So in that way, you can save a time. And then the, the best time is to reach the uh, hospital uh, around uh, like within 60 hours or maybe something like that. That will also depend how much venom has been put to that particular snake. So I would like to also remind one of the uh, uh, one of the story of a snake bite. And he went to his room and without switch on the light, he just stepped on the snake and it was a bandit crate. Then he uh, somehow switched on the light and he saw a snake just wrapping around his leg and giving a firm bite. Then uh, with a kick, the snake was there on the floor without killing it. Then he took out his mobile phone and took the photographs of that particular snake, the bandit crate. And then after that, he closed the door. Then he called his friend, and uh, with, uh, with his friend, he went to the Assam Medical College. Uh, it's around like uh, 20 kilometers away uh, from his area. And then he went to the casualty. Then he saw the picture of the snake that he had taken it. Then the doctors know what type of treatment he needed to carry out. And in that way, the patient was safe, and he was in the coma for three uh, three days. Because after showing the photograph slowly, he become a little bit of uh, dizziness because the reaction had already started. And it was uh, more than 45 minutes uh, from the snake bite and reaching to the hospital. So the doctor had treated him and he was cured completely. So he knew that his best way to go to a hospital is not to a local doctor, not neither to a local hospital, but to go to a some medical college. And you see, if this venomous snake bite has given to any person, uh, that hospital should have a ventilation. The hospital also should have a kidney dialysis unit because these are the two vital organs that are being affected by this any venomous snake bite. So one has to also look for uh, ventilation and the dialysis also in that hospital and probably any venomous snake bite can be easily treated by those hospitals. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, so much of like uh, constantly you have shown a very much like uh, you have shown a very much uh, informative videos and informative PPT. Thank you very much uh, to Bongawashi Morning College for organizing the uh, event in the night time. Now uh, it is a complete good night time and, and it's a program from uh, Morning College. Thank you very much to our respected um, uh, Sikra Hal Madam and our respected NSS program officer, uh, Dr. Tulika Chakravarti, madam, for organizing this program because uh, it was a 
it was <laughs> my interest to, to organize this program because i missed some part on another another uh, webinar uh, with our eminent speaker rajiv dutta tarya ang uh, sir from ikpoi college assam uh, so now i have uh, the rest part i missed i just have completed all the parts thank you very much sir for for your valuable time and uh, giving back to back two lectures in the finger in the land of west bengal and we also have our our eminent speaker in in the their last year prd camp uh, here in the nit and uh, that is the uh, link for the um, for uh, with with the bengal college and our respected eminent speaker now it's another journey that we have started thank you much sir for your valuable Well, presence and each and every time, uh, what I can say that the number of questions is unlimited, and and even uh, uh, times. So the program has started in six uh, thirty now. It's nine uh, thirty almost, and people are watching with the great zeal and great interest. That is the uh, beauty of the topic. And being a, I am uh, also a student of was a student of geology, so um, uh, it's a great. Uh, thing to learn something about the next thank you very much as to our respected uh, program officer madam for making this program happen and as a part of nss golden jubilee lecture series we are just going to end end by second uh, october so uh, it will be uh, a documented thing that we have also arranged a program on the snakes thank you very much thank you Thank you so much, Ogdimil sir, for being with us and always motivating us behind all the program. Uh, now uh, I would like to request uh, Shomi is there. I I would like to request Shomi to report the session. Shomi Mukherjee. Okay, uh, I think uh, the, she has some problem. I think. Okay, then uh, now, now I have to move towards the decorum. This the Thanksgiving again. As the Thanksgiving uh, protocol is there. So, thank you all. Thank you uh, all. I would like to thank my. Um, I would like to convey my thanks to uh, Professor Shipra Haldar, ma'am, teacher in charge of Bangabashi Morning College. And then uh, I would, uh, of course, I would like to extend my thanks to R D Kolkata and his sons for constantly motivating and inspiring, inspiring us, especially Mr. Ogni Mildas, youth officer, for always like, uh, ma'am, you can do this, you can do those, 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 and those are the things. So thanks a lot, uh, sir. And uh, uh, again, uh, I would like to thank all my dear volunteers. For constantly motivating, constantly working with us, and in all the program, and then again, I would like to thank uh, especially Chandran Mehuli and Shomi for all your kind support for extending your hands towards the program. And my special, special thanks goes to our today's speaker, sir. I, I just came to know, sir, is uh, knowing as Snake Man of Assam. So <laughs> it's a, like a privilege for us for uh, to have a for being here. So last but not the least, I would like to thank for all the. Lecture series will start from you day after tomorrow on Gandhi Jayanti. So please bring it us and uh, thanks a lot to Brati, all of you. Thank you.